Good morning, this is Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack with your update for today, May 29th, 2020. There are a number of things going on in the world that are, are worth noting, and I'm going to cover a few of them, but I want to begin with what I think is the most important. LaRouche Pack is releasing a new report on how we can produce 1.5 billion jobs worldwide, uh, driven by 50 million new productive jobs in the United States. Why is this so important? We're hearing all this noise about reopening the economy, and clearly, people are suffering. There's been a, a very serious problem for people, the, the vast majority of the Americans who live paycheck to paycheck, who are not working, who don't have uh, uh, bank accounts or savings to draw upon, uh, who already have a lot of debt in terms of credit cards, mortgage debt, and so on. And the meager handouts from the government to the average American is not enough to keep people afloat. Now, meanwhile, the government, through the Federal Reserve, it's not even the government, it's the Federal Reserve, which is a private central bank, is providing between four and eight trillion dollars to speculators to keep afloat zombie corporations, uh, junk bond debt to allow trading to continue, in financial instruments which are of very little or dubious value. But when it comes to the average American being able to make his food bills, his rent payments, and everything else, it's becoming increasingly impossible, especially with the economy shut down. So, of course, people are talking about reopening the economy. But few people are asking the question, reopening it to do what? And as I've been emphasizing, and as LaRouche Pack is uh, reporting in this new document that we've just released, which is available on the LaRouchePack.com website. The old economy is not coming back. It's dead. It's finished. It's undergoing a systemic collapse. What that means is that even if they produce four, five, six, eight, ten trillion dollars of new liquidity for the speculators, all that's doing is piling up a suffocating debt on the shrinking aspects of the physical productive economy. What we need is an infusion of credit into the productive sector, but not just credit, not just money. What's necessary is an emphasis on those areas which are the driver for a rapid increase in productivity, that is in the production of real wealth per person employed in the labor force. As we report in our uh, new document, the labor force at this point has well over two-thirds of the population either unemployed or involved in sec uh, sectors of the uh, economy which don't produce wealth. Now look, we need certain services. There, there's no question about that, like teachers and firefighters, first responders are absolutely essential. They're not productive in the sense that they're not producing something new, but they're a necessary part of the economy. But really, how many nail parlors do we need? How many tattoo parlors do we need? The, the so-called gig economy, which now includes worldwide close to three quarters of, of those people employed, doesn't produce real wealth. Now, some people may be insulted by this, especially if you're in the gig economy. It's not your fault that the world economy has been restructured. So we've shifted away from productive employment, which provided jobs with real wages, with benefits, and with a sense of pride that you're producing something or doing something that adds to the overall economy. When we talk about productive economy, we're talking about manufacturing, agriculture, construction, transportation and utilities. These are the things that, that provide what's necessary in terms of power, in terms of clean water, in terms of clean air, in terms of nutrition, and in terms of the capital goods that are needed to make sure these things are produced more efficiently. If you don't have an economy which is investing in those areas, you don't have an economy. And what you have is people scrambling day to day, month to month to cover their expenses, who then seek some sense of identity through social media, through binge watching on television, uh, through drugs and alcohol and so on. 
And that's what we see increasingly happening to the population, including, tragically, the youth of this country, the youth of the United States. Now, that's why in our report, we go back and take you through the thinking of Lyndon LaRouche on economics. Why it is that productivity, based on gains in science, scientific research and development, the transformation of that science into new technologies, why that's the driver force for a prospering physical economy. And it has to do with the nature of man. Are we just beings who exist to stuff ourselves with momentary pleasures to get through the time from when we're born to when we die? Or do we see ourselves as uh, created in the image and likeness of God with a capability to do something that has an effect on many other human beings including many who are not alive yet today. And by that, I mean you give meaning to those who went before us, your parents and, and ancestors who sacrificed and fought to allow a modern economy to exist, and then for our children and grandchildren and many generations in the future. That's the way human beings used to think. And that's the way when the generation came out after World War II, they said, we want to create a world that's better. And it got hijacked. It got hijacked by the same forces that got us into two worlds in the last uh, century, the British Empire. And there was a fight between Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill over what kind of post-war world there would be. And for those who want more background and documentation of this, we have a wonderful documentary called 1932, which includes the eyewitness reports on the Churchill-Roosevelt meetings where Roosevelt said, Winston, American soldiers are not dying in this war to restore the British Empire. And according to one of the people who was reporting on this, Churchill nearly turned purple and said, but of course we're going to restore the British Empire. It was Roosevelt's intention not to restore the British Empire. Unfortunately, Franklin Roosevelt passed away. And Harry Truman, as Lyndon LaRouche has often pointed out, was a little man who was easily manipulated by Churchill and to some extent by Stalin into a Cold War, a Cold War in which the actual interests of the United States, which is to lead the world out of the devastation of World War II and, out, and the, the poorer countries out from under the yoke of colonialism, did not take place. We had advances, we had developments. In, in the 50s, we had a certain amount of uh, investment in capital goods in the military. But also, importantly, we had the Highway Production Act, the High Interstate Highway Act of President Eisenhower. In the 60s, we had NASA, which gave an incredible boost to the physical economy. But since that time, we've had no real investment in advances in the physical economy. And as a result, we've seen the productive curve drop as the financial and monetary curves have gone up, what LaRouche described in his triple curve function as the worst of all possible worlds. You're creating unsustainable debt. You're pouring funny money into the economy to cover the debt. And meanwhile, you're starving the productive sector. So we put together a report which shows how we can restore an economy based on the ideas and principles of what's called the American system of physical economy, especially as developed and advanced by Lyndon LaRouche. LaRouche has forecast virtually every single bubble that's popped since the decision in 1971 to take the dollar off the gold reserve system and to set up a floating exchange rate economy. Speculators have created bubbles. They've made enormous wealth from that while the rest of us have been left scrambling to make ends meet and finding that there are more days in the month than we have income to cover. So how about a program to reopen the economy to make sure there's livable wages, a future of new production, and a capability to leave to our children and grandchildren a better world? That's what our report is about. And I would urge people to read the report. You can pick it up online, read it, study it, 
If you have questions, ask whoever you talk to in the LaRouche movement. If you want to, you can send me an email with a question. You can reach me at harleysch at gmail.com. Send me an email with your questions or with your ideas. But most importantly, let's get a dialogue going, not just banging the drums to reopen the economy, but to open the economy in a fundamentally new way, which reflects the greatest traditions of our United States of America, as well as the honorable tradition of the idea of that each of us was given by our creator a capability to be creative and to participate in the advance of all mankind. And with that, on Saturday, we have the launch of the United States back into space with the space program. If you're one of those people who don't believe in the space program, turn us off. Go uh, walk around your flat earth. But for those of us who are interested, hopefully this will be the beginning of a new era of exploration. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you again next week.